Okay, this is lab nine for inheritance. This is probably a pretty confusing lab for a lot of you who are having a hard time with inheritance in general. This goes through mostly simple inheritance. Um, you'll get more of the sex linked or complex inheritance um, in lecture when you do the South Park activity, but there is some more complex inheritance in here um, with codominance and um, yeah, yeah, you do have some codominance um, and I think incomplete dominance as well. Okay, so let's just go over a little bit of what this lab is and hopefully it'll answer a lot of your questions that you might come across. So please make sure that you read this really carefully. I would highly recommend watching some of the other videos. You'll have these videos posted in your lecture as well. Um, I would recommend watching at least this Beginner's Guide to Punnett Squares in addition to the lectures, especially chapter 11 and chapter 12. Those lectures are going to be really helpful. This beginner's guide is also probably helpful. Um, there's animations and information in your launch pad that are useful. These Khan Academy, if you've ever done them, um, they're a little bit more interactive, so it will have information about the general concepts that it's going over, but you also have some practice questions. And these might be pretty similar to your exam questions, so you might want to take a look at them um, and get really comfortable with them. Okay, most of what we're talking about in this lab is more so simple inheritance. And again, um, it's least confusing to refer to these traits or these alleles as the same letter. Okay, so usually use the dominant allele as a capital letter and the recessive allele as a lowercase letter, but use the same ones. For example, capital M and lowercase m right here. Okay. Okay, so the first part is just a little bit of practice. So practicing terminology. Um, again, when you're doing this, I understand it might be difficult depending on what kind of programs you have, if you have a touch screen, blah, blah, blah. So feel free to print this out and do it by hand. Feel free to just write it out on a piece of paper. You don't need to write out the questions. You can just write part one, number one, and write it down on a piece of paper and then scan it or take pictures of it. Whatever is easiest for you, you can type it all out doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to draw a little bit on here just so I can show you guys what I'm doing. So part one, practicing terminology. In a simple dominant trait with two alleles, capital P and lowercase p, list all possible genotypes along with the corresponding phenotypes. Okay. Um, so as an example, if we have capital P and lowercase p, again, I usually try to differentiate the lowercase by underlining them. Okay. Um, underline um, is lowercase, which means it's recessive, okay? Um, so say I have capital P, lowercase p, that would be my heterozygote, okay? And then you have two more as an example. Uh, what is the difference between heterozygous and homozygous? I'll let you guys answer these questions. I think they're fairly straightforward. Um, if you know purple color number four is, if you know purple flower color is dominant over white flower color, is a white flower heterozygous or homozygous? So if we know a purple flower, let's say, I guess we could keep it as P's, right? Um, I think later they're gonna be F's, but, so purple, let's say, is dominant, so we know it's capital P, capital P, but it could also be, capital P, lowercase p, right? So is a white flower heterozygous or homozygous? Explain your answer. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of a hint as to what that is. Once we get into step two, this is an example problem. Okay, so keep in mind when you're doing these Punnett squares, we usually have the female over here and the male up here, although it doesn't really matter, that just tends to be how we do it. And we usually write the dominant one first, okay? Um, so if you have a capital letter, usually you put that first. If you have two capital letters or two recessive, it, does, it doesn't matter, right? And you could write it the other way. It just tends to get more confusing. This is kind of the standard. But we have a female, we have a male. Each one of these letters represents an allele. 
a possible allele, right? So each one of these is a gamete. So a female has one of two alleles that she can pass on to a gamete. In this case, she has a little f or a little f. The male has a big F or a big F, okay? So step one, what gametes can each parent produce? Exactly that, right? So the purple flower is genotype um, capital F, lowercase f, which I don't think we have on here. Um, but so that's a heterozygote, right? So the gametes it can produce are either capital F or lowercase f. White flower genotype is lowercase f, lowercase f. The only um, gamete that it can produce is a lowercase f. Okay. What percentage of offspring would you expect to be purple? So again, whenever we cross a homozygous recessive by a homozygous dominant, 100% of the offspring will be heterozygotes. Okay. So that's always a general rule you can know so that you can save time on doing Punnett squares. But Punnett squares are easy enough to do when you take these quizzes, you take these exams. Sometimes I won't ask you to draw the Punnett square, but in order to solve the question, you will pretty much have to draw a Punnett square. So I would get used to making little boxes on the side of your paper, maybe having some scratch paper so that you can do little Punnett squares off to the side and go through it. Okay, what percentage of offspring would you expect to be white? Zero percent. So that's a sample problem that you can always refer back to if you get lost in some of this. Okay, um, so very similar. Now we're working off of that sample problem. Now you're going to create a Punnett square for a cross between a heterozygote and a white flowered. So we know white has to be lowercase, lowercase. We know a heterozygote has to be uppercase, lowercase, right? And then you're going to do your cross. Okay. Again, um, you could do it like that. You could also just type. Let's see here. You could also just type, right? So I could do F, F, lowercase F, lowercase F. And then I could come over here and I could do capital F and then tab over and do. And you could do it this way, right? So I can go. F, F. So you can type it out. You don't need to have the lines in there necessarily. Obviously, that might be nicer, mostly for you. I can grade it either way. So do it however you need to do it. It's definitely doable by typing it. You can write it by hand. You can draw on it if you have that ability. Whatever you would like to do is totally fine as long as I understand that it is your answer. Okay. Um, so keep this in mind too. It says what are the possible genotypes of the offspring for this cross. So let's just do the very first part together. I have a white flower over here um, with possible gametes lowercase f and lowercase f. And I have a purple flower up here that's a heterozygote. So I have possible gametes of uppercase and lowercase f. So our first cross here is f, <laughs> uppercase f and lowercase f. Um, so one of the possible genotypes is a heterozygote, right? And then the possible phenotype so far for that would be purple. Okay, there are more, so you're still going to have to complete this. But just as an example, hopefully that kind of sets you on the right path. Okay. Um, for number seven, again, you're going to be doing genotypes and phenotypes. So again, make sure you pay careful attention to the directions. You do need both of them. So if you're crossing a tall plant with a short plant, so again, capital T, capital T, lowercase t, lowercase t, do your Punnett square, and then tell me what you expect. So again, when you have two homozygotes, a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive, I should say, you're gonna come out with 100% heterozygote, okay? So here's like a freebie, 100% heterozygote, we know it'll be TT. So that's the genotype. The phenotype would be what? So make sure you give me both of these on these questions, okay? Okay, moving on. So this one I think is one of the harder questions, number eight. List the gametes that can be produced by a pea plant with the following genotypes. There's a hint here. Remember that an allele for every gene considered must be present in each gamete. So as a parent, when you're passing on alleles to your offspring, you have to pass them something. 
right? So we're looking at different alleles here. Um, so say this is your, your gene, right? Whatever gene it is, it's the gene for pea plants, okay? Um, and you are going to have a kid, so you're going to have one of these going into your egg or sperm, whatever it is, one of your gametes, right? So what are the possible choices that we have? Well, we can either pass on a capital P or we can pass on a lowercase p. That's it. So it's getting a little bit more complicated once we have um, multiple alleles involved, okay? So again, one of each letter has to be represented, okay? So this is where it gets a little bit weird. So I can pass on a capital P and a capital T. I could pass on a lowercase p and a capital T. I could also pass on a lowercase p and a lowercase t, okay? So there's a few different choices that you have for that one. And then similarly, it'll get kind of confusing down here. Um, let's see here, did I miss something? I think I missed something. P, T, P, T. Oh, yep, um, I forgot the first one. Capital P, lowercase t. Okay, so I've got four possible gamete choices there. Okay, so when I, if I were doing my Punnett square, I would put all four of these up here. And you, we'll see that in just a second. I'll show you guys a little bit more. And then once we go down here, again, we just look at each letter. So we go capital P, capital T, capital Y capital P, lowercase t, uppercase y. Oops, sorry, no comma there. So you keep going on for that. As a hint, you should have eight for this one, okay? So eight gametes for this one. For this one, I think you're only gonna have two. For D, also we'll have two. C, we already did, A, we already did, and B, I'm gonna leave you to do, okay? Some of these are gonna be working backwards a little bit, like in number nine and in number 10. Number 10 is pretty straightforward questions, but keep in mind, you will have to do a Punnett square in order to figure them out, okay? So you're gonna tell me the genotypes for these, the F1 generation, remember F1 generation just means the cross between the parents. So whatever the parents are, right? We have dad up here, mom over here, Whatever the parents are, they produce these offspring. This is your F1. To get F2, now we're going to cross whatever we had in F1. So we have F1 dad over here, F1 mom over here, and then we cross to see what this is, and that is our F2. Okay. So in order to answer these questions, you will have to do a Punnett square. I don't have to see it. You can always draw it off to the side. Um, that'll help me understand where you went wrong if you would like a little bit more feedback or if you would like to understand a little bit better when you're looking at the key. But I would definitely at least do it on scratch paper and kind of understand how to do it and what, what you're going for. Okay, here's where we're gonna get into multiple alleles, multiple genes. So in horses, and we're talking about number 11 here, in horses, black coat color is dominant with chestnut color as the recessive phenotype. The trotting gait is also dominant with pacing as the recessive phenotype. Okay, so we're going to, let's see here. Okay, so we'll do, what is it, brown and chestnut. So we'll do capital B, R, Oh, sorry, it's black and chestnut. We'll do, we'll do capital B for black and lowercase b for chestnut, okay? So we know we have a homozygous black pacer. So if he's homozygous, he's gonna be capital B, capital B. And if he's a pacer, the trotting gait is also dominant. So we'll say capital T for trotting gait and lowercase t um, for, what is it? 
oh sorry for um a pacer okay so we have a homozygous black pacer so we know he's capital b capital b and he's a pacer which is recessive so he's lowercase t lowercase t and we're going to mate him to a homozygous chestnut trotter so we know it's lowercase b lowercase b and it's a trotter and it says homozygous so we know it's capital t capital t okay so when we're doing this we first have to figure out what our possible gametes are and i know that this can be a little bit confusing um again you've just got to go through each one right so basically you have capital b lowercase t and capital b lowercase t for dad and then we have b capital t b capital t and then we're just going to go through and write it out so capital b lowercase b capital t lowercase t capital b lowercase b capital t lowercase t right and you're just going to keep going and that will give you this is your punnett square here okay that will give you your answer so i want to see your punnett square for this i also want to see what the phenotype is going to be for your f1 generation okay and remember this is just like doing it with only one gene or only one set of alleles if it's homozygous times homozygous dominant times recessive you're coming out with heterozygotes as a hint okay um b is a very similar question but you're going to take that f1 male and mate it to it another female okay now we're getting into codominant and incomplete dominance so in a certain type of flower the dominant color is blue the recessive color is red um, incomplete dominance I'm not sure if I mentioned it in lecture actually although it is mentioned in your book um, incomplete dominance is where the heterozygous phenotype is a blend of dominant and recessive phenotype okay um, codominance actually I'm pretty sure I did mention incomplete dominance in your lecture but just in case you forgot um, so when we're going into question number 12 we're talking about blue and red and if we get two heterozygote blue flowers are crossed, what are the potential genotypes and phenotypes of that cross? And what if they have codominance? What if they have incomplete dominance? So with codominance, they're going to express both equally, right? So we would have blue and red. With incomplete dominance, we would have blue mixing with red, which would give us that would be your answer for D. Okay. Okay, so number 13, again, probably another kind of tough question. We're looking at blood types, which is codominance. Okay, so keep this in mind when you're looking at blood types um, and you know, try not to get too confused. So again, A and B are codominant, O is recessive. So if you see O with A or B, it, so like this one, for example, AO positive negative. Okay, and it says it all up here as well, so you can read through this. Please make sure you do. But the positive allele also has dominance over the negative allele. Okay, so in this case, we see an A with an O, and we know that the A is dominant to O. So the phenotype would just be A, and positive is dominant to negative. So this phenotype is just A positive. Okay. Similarly, um, let's say with AB positive slash negative, we know that A and B are codominant, so we would see both A and B. We have markers for both, but positive is still dominant over negative, so this would be an AB positive. Okay, so go through and figure those out. And then you have a little bit of a mystery. So two parents believe that their baby was switched at the hospital. Okay, the mom has blood type O plus, the father has blood type AB plus, and the baby has blood type B minus. So you're gonna go through and answer the questions and see if the baby could potentially be theirs. But we wanna know the genotypes of the parents and the baby. So parents, baby, and again, you can type all this out. It's just a little bit quicker for me while I'm, I'm showing you guys to write it. But the mom has blood type O positive, so she basically can only have 
one, right? She's got to be OO, but she can be O positive, O positive, or she could be O positive, uh, oops, O, pretend, let's just erase that, <laughs> O negative. Um, either one of those would equal out to O positive, right? And then do the same thing for dad, who is AB positive. So what possible choices does he have? Baby is B negative, okay? Um, B negative can be a few different things, right? So B negative could just be BB negative negative. Could also be something else, okay? Obviously, it's not going to have a plus in there. What are the possible gametes that can be produced by the parents? So we saw, let's take, for example, the mom up here. We know that she's O positive. So she's either OO positive positive or OO positive negative. So the only thing she could possibly pass on to her baby is either an O positive or an O negative, okay? So you'll, you'll do the same thing with dad. Dad's a little bit more complicated because he's an AB. So he's gonna have an A, an A, a B, a B, okay? And positive and negatives in there somewhere. So he's gonna have four total. Okay, so make sure you go through that. And then is the baby theirs? Explain your answer using Punnett squares. Um, you might get lucky and only have to do one Punnett square. You might have to do several, but basically we wanna know if you think that the baby could possibly be theirs based on Punnett squares that you can come up with. And again, you've got the possible gametes. So when you're making your Punnett square, mom can again either be O positive, O positive, or she could be O positive. O negative, right? So these are different Punnett squares that you might have to do. Dad has a few more combinations. So you might have up to like six Punnett squares that you have to do to figure out whether or not this could be the baby. Um, you might only have to do one Punnett square if you guess correctly the first time. Okay, part five, multiple gene interaction. This one is also probably a little bit confusing. So we have multiple genes interacting on this one. It's a little bit different than our black or chestnut trotters and pacers that we had earlier. Um, so now we're looking at laboratory retrievers. So the dominant allele capital B is black, white is chocolate, okay? So you can see capital B, lowercase b, and then when you get a golden, the reason why you get a golden is because there's a second locus, which are the E's, that control whether or not pigments are expressed only in the skin or in the fur, okay? So this is the extension trait, that's why they give it an E um, letter. So dogs with genotypes with a dominant E will have whatever is indicated by the Bs, but if they have lowercase, lowercase E, then they will be a golden retriever, okay? Or a yellow lab, sorry. I don't know why I keep saying retrievers. These are labs. So we have black, chocolate, and then yellow, labs. Okay, so it lists the nine possible genotypes of a Labrador retriever. Um, I guess that's why I keep saying it. They are retrievers. Um, so this is the nine possible genotypes for, for these. Um, so again, you go through it. For a black lab, you're also going to, sorry, with the phenotypes as well. So you could label, I would probably label the phenotype first. So we have black, brown, or chocolate, I should say chocolate, and um, yellow, right? So yellow could be a bunch of different combinations. It could be capital B, capital B. The important thing is you need these little E's, okay? So the only thing it could be is E's. Um, there are nine possible genotypes. I will give you a hint that there are three under the yellow, okay? Um, and then chocolate, you only have a few, um, a couple possible, and then black, you've got a few more. Okay, so go through and list all of the possible genotypes under that phenotype that they could possibly be. Then you go down here, you have two chocolate labs produce a litter of puppies, one of which is a yellow lab. What is the genotype of the yellow lab pup? What are the genotypes of the parents? So you've got to work a little bit backwards. Um, so, oops, let's see here. So tell me what the yellow genotype is and what the parents are, okay? 
And then C, the yellow lab, who happens to be a male, later goes up, befriends a lady. Um, sires, uh, does it say sires on here? Yeah, sires the puppies. If you don't know what sires means, it basically just means he's the dad, right? He got the mom pregnant. Um, that's what a sire is. So the owner of the lady yellow lab claims that the male yellow lab sired the puppies. Is she correct? Why or why not? Again, for a lot of these questions, you might have to do some Punnett squares. Uh, I don't necessarily have to see them, although that might help me. Um, but once you get into this, it is going to be a little bit more confusing. So now we have a male yellow lab befriending another lady, this time a black lab. Okay. Black lab later produces a litter of puppies that are a mix of black chocolate and yellow. What is the genotype of the mother of the puppies? Okay, and again, we've got it work backwards a little bit here, but we've got, let's see, a male yellow lab. So our male yellow lab, if we go back up here, would have to be one of these two things, right? Um, actually, technically, yeah, it could be, it could be either of these. Oh yeah, yeah, I did say three, okay. So, hint, you guys are getting a lot of answers on this video, um, but I, I think it's very confusing, which is part of the reason, so I wanna make sure you understand. So these are three possibilities for a yellow lab, right? So you'll have to figure out which yellow lab it actually is as you're going through it, um, but let's, you know, let's say it's BBEE. -E. I'm not saying it is, I, I don't honestly even know off the top of my head. Um, so when we're doing this, the possibilities are gonna be BE, 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 and BE, right? If it were B, capital B, lowercase b, lowercase e, lowercase e, then our possibilities would be BE, BE, well, sorry, I, I know I'm just saying it. Um, capital B, lowercase e, capital, um, now we have lowercase b, e, and lowercase b, e, okay? So we have different gametes. So these are the different possible gametes that you could produce from this genotype. Okay, so you're gonna have to do a big cross. You'll have a four by four Punnett square here that you'll be doing. Okay. And then that will also tell you what the answer is for, for letter E, what are the genotypes of the puppies produced in this cross. And for the genotypes, I think you should only have four. Okay. Hopefully that's a, um, hopefully a helpful video. I definitely recommend getting more practice in and looking online as well for different resources. That's gonna take up a little bit of your lab time for this week too. Um, so please go ahead and take your time doing that. Make sure I would do this lab sooner rather than later so that if you do have questions, you have enough time to ask them and work with other people in your lab as well. Um, compare notes or try to get together and work on it virtually, of course. Um, but if you do have questions, please let me know, definitely watch the chapter 11 and 12 lectures in addition to all of the other materials that you've been given.